Hello and welcome to Academy Live episode 19. 19. Hello. This is 19 <laughs> in finger numbers. Hello and welcome. Uh, so today, before we even start with anything, we want to send out a nerd alert. So all you normal photographers out there, uh, click somewhere and go to a different page or look at the next pro photo post or so forth, because this is going to be really nerdy. Uh, we're going to talk about we are going to talk about flash, how a flash works, and... And we're going to talk about the difference between a flat front flash, like this, flat front, and a bare bulb uh, flash. So we've done some measures, or actually we've done a lot of measures, both in and out, uh, up and down, and all kinds of metrics. And, and so now we have some data points and uh, we want to uh, talk about. So, do, so yeah. uh, if you are a normal photographer, uh, you might find this really, really nerdy. And we do encourage you to go out right now and take some pictures instead. <laughs> and, and for the rest of you that really like nerdy stuff like this, stay tuned. Okay, so, yeah, you're going to love this. It's going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to uh, basically uh, uh, talk about how does a flash works and how did we come up with this knowledge? That was a really interesting experience. Anders called me, he, so he was like, David, I have set up this meeting with this guy, <laughs> you know, one of the guys back in the R&D, you know, one of the guys that really do know how Flash works because, I mean, they are constructing these things from the very beginning. And I, I turned up and there he was in a room, Anders sitting next to this guy in a room and he started to talk. Oh. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. <laughs> he started to talk and started to draw and you know, he knew everything. He knew everything about electricity. He knew everything about everything within this. And we are like normal people <laughs> compared to him. <laughs> so we tried to you know, bring the stuff out from what he said to make that into uh, something that normal nerds can understand. Exactly. So we basically were trying to translate uh, what he said into uh, normal language. So Please excuse us for some of the drawings that you will see uh, fairly soon, and and also some of the okay. language. And for uh, but we think we got it all uh, correct at least. But it will give you a little bit of a hint, an idea of how this little thing, uh, the flash tube, how it actually goes boom and why, what happens. Uh, so uh, we have a lot of people already here. We are oh, there. We go. We got Joel from Houston. We got Manchester here as well. We see some Swedes, Rhode Island, Austria, India, awesome, Scotland. Hello, hello everybody. Hello. So cool. And um, so with that, I think we, we should just uh, jump over to um, the topic of how a flash works. Because for me, it's a bit of a mystery. Uh, you have these black things that go poof and then you get light. Yes, and I thought that a flash worked uh, because you put power in this and, and then it goes boom. Uh, but it is, there is a lot of stuff going on yeah. inside to control this, which is what we are going to show you how it works. Exactly. So I think we, uh, we got, I'm going to send you over oh. to the whiteboard. You send me over to yeah. the whiteboard. <laughs> and then pro <laughs> Professor Bishu can uh, oh, you take a sip of coffee first. Uh, so, so please do also ask questions if there are any. Uh, Carol from Poland, hello. Uh, so any, all of you people ask questions if, if it comes up and we will also uh, take any question towards the end. Now is, uh, David is over by the whiteboard. So, uh, a flash, what do you have? Yes, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to this beautiful sketch that I'd made out of how a flash works. And I will guide you through it from the top to the bottom. And I will include some fun facts in the end. Okay, <clears throat> so let's start with something we all know how it works. A normal light bulb. A normal light bulb. This place here, this is where we get all the powers, all the power from. We got in, in the US 110 volt, in the, in the, here in Sweden we have 220 volt. The power is going out from the wall into our light bulb and it lights up. That is great. Inside the light, bul the light bulb, at least re uh, before, we had this uh, filament that all the power went into so it got warm and started to light, to, to be bright. That is how a light bulb work works. So, and I just realized 
We forgot one here. Oh. The, the 16. 60. Si one six. The one six. Yeah. And that's a battery. Oh, of course. You yes. got battery driven. Yes. So we, had, we have battery driven uh, flashes, of course. Yes, we yeah. do. So, okay. So uh, this, is how, uh, this is how a light bulb works. So when we look at a flash, I have drawn this sh uh, horseshoe shaped shape. That is the flash tube. Maybe, Anders, if we could swing it around and just take a look at how it actually looks inside the flash. So this is the flash tube. It's shaped like a horseshoe. And I have tried to draw the exactly the same shape here to be really clear on yeah. this sketch. Cool. Yes. And there's no filament in this one. Exactly. There is no filament in that one. In the light bulb, we have this filament that gets warm and start to, to, to be bright. But in the, in the flash tube, it's totally empty. Well, at least from a filament perspective. Because inside the flash tube, there is a gas. A gas called xenon gas, okay? The problem with a flash tube is that it needs at least 350 volts to start to, to, to be brought to, to light up, okay? 350 volts. And in our power mains, we only have at maximum 220, at least here in Sweden, 110 in the States and 16 volts from a battery. So to make this uh, to be bright, we need 350 volts. How is this achieved? Then, it, then we come to the capacitor. This bucket is inside the flash. Actually, there are several of them. So we take a lot of power, like I draw this like water driplets, into this capacitor. And when we fill this up, we have a lot of mo uh, much more vo uh, voltage. So we can have this 350 voltage. Uh, this power is going out here, do -do -do, do -do -do -do, all the way to the flash tube. But when this power is, is uh, igniting the, the, the flash tube, this is way too slow to be a quick flash, you know, like a boom, a flash needs to be really quick. So what we also have is another bucket here, a smaller bucket that always is connected to this flash tube. And this smaller bucket makes the flash tube always have a current. So we, you don't need another 350 volts to make the flash tube go boom. You just need a little, little bit more. So this smaller bucket keeps the currents constantly flowing. And when it's time to flash, we have this thing here, a spark plug. It's like a spark plug. That is the, the metal wire that is uh, spinned around the whole flash tube. It makes this metal wire go uh, ignite everything. And what will happen inside the gas is that all the molecules in this xenon gas, that is electrons and ions, they are all randomly placed in there, floating around like this. And when this wire get a spark, boop, all these men in here, all these, these molecules, or uh, sorry, uh, atoms, no, sorry, uh, electrons and ions, they will be lined up. They will stand like men holding hands in a straight row like this. I, I hope that you can see that this is supposed to be reassembled to three men holding hands. Okay, so in the gas, all the electrons and ions are in a, in a straight line like this, and they will start to shine whoop, in a plasma light. Okay, a plasma light that is really hot. Anders, how hot is plasma? Uh, it's uh, somewhere about 800 to 1000 uh, degrees yeah. Celsius, like really, really hot. Really, really, really hot. Um, and so I'm taking down questions here, so I'm okay. writing them down. Yeah. So, so okay. all you guys is putting questions, do don't worry, we will get an answer, uh, answer yes. them. So we will first get one thin light. Uh, in an archway, which then will an, uh, ignite the whole gas, all, uh, all of the gases inside this flash tube, and we will have the flash. Bada boom! And down here, I will draw how this actually looks when you are looking at the uh, the flash power. So this is the beginning, this is the end. So at first we get a lot of power like this, and then it slowly falls down into nothingness. 
and actually this amount of power creates different colors. At the top here, we might have, I'm not sure about this, but about, you know, about around 15,000 Kelvin. That is really blue, blue, a blue light. And in the middle here somewhere, we will have maybe 5,000 Kelvin, you know, normal sunlight. Uh, and below, we will have really warm, maybe 2,500 Kelvin. But our camera will capture this over a time frame. So what we will have, the actual color we will have in our image, is the average of all these colors. So in the end, the light in our image will be about 5,500 Kelvins-ish. And a fun fact with the flash, when it's up here, when all the power is, is emerging from the light, from the flash tube, you will actually have 1.2 megawatts of power. That is a lot of power. Just for a very, very short per period of time, of course. And this actually equals... If you imagine you have a toaster, you know, an ordinary toast machine. Which oh, this is, is going to be fun. See, you draw a, a yeah, toaster. Yeah, I draw a toaster in th three dimensions. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is, you know, this is the front going into the side. <clears throat> okay, this was supposed to look like a toaster with, you know, with two slots, like you can make two pieces of go uh, brown, beautiful bread. Uh, one toaster of, let's say, 900 watts. How much is that compared to the, the 1.2 megawatts? Let me tell you. One toaster is absolutely not enough. Two toasters, absolutely not enough. Ten toasters, absolutely not enough. enough. Actually, it is the same amount of power as uh, 1,420 toasters in a very short period of time, of course, but that is what's going on when the flash flashes. And this is thanks to the capacitors that, that uh, collects all the power and all the electronics inside that really makes this uh, possible. And um, I think that's quite it. That is how a flash tube works. Did I forget 1, anything, 1,420 toasters, so that's why it's not good to put your tongue inside there, right? You should not put your tongue inside there. Okay. This is really dangerous stuff going on there. That is why we have all these uh, safety glasses and, and, and such. Was that all, Anders, or did I, I think, miss anything? No, I think you covered it, it, it all very well. That's how I understood it. <laughs> exactly. Well. Oh, I know one thing. Uh, the capacitor, well, when you fill up the capacitor, since we only have... Uh, 16 volts or 110 volts or 220 volts, uh, it, uh, the amount of, of energy we put in, the, the, the speed of it is totally de uh, depending on that. If you, the more power you have from the beginning, the quicker the capacitors will, will uh, go full. In other words, the quicker you can flash your flash. But the electronics inside uh, evens this out, so we have the same speed no matter where in the world we are connecting our flash to. Um, so, okay, now that is all I know about this. I will leave the word over to Anders. And thank I think you, so you did much. A, a, a great job. Thank, uh, you, thank you. And I think we covered it all with the. Uh, and then there's a lot of other technology that comes into play with, when you talk about uh, uh, flash cutting uh, and uh, HSS, etc. And that's a lot of that is controlled through software uh, and it's basically. Uh, the reason why it's so important to upgrade your firmwares on your flashes because not only because uh, sometimes uh, there might be a bug in the software uh, that we need to update uh, but most often uh, we actually can add features I mean we can change the menus on it we can uh, add features I mean like if you look at the latest a1 firmware upgrade we added things like uh, a flicker-free modeling light. Because if you, in the past, when you were doing a video and you used the modeling light as a video light, uh, when you had certain shutter, sp shutter speeds on the camera and certain power levels on the modeling light, it could, you could see a flicker in the, in the video. And uh, that's taken away through a firmware upgrade. Uh, 
people also said that they were uh, feeling that they did not get uh, the enough power during HSS on the A1. So we added a feature called HSS Boost. And it was, again, through firmware upgrades, uh, you, you added that feature. So without needing to leave the uh, flash for service or anything, you, you can actually get those just by upgrading the firmware. Um, so this firmware also controls, I mean, the software controls things like the, uh, how the curve looks like, the flash curve, etc. cetera. And, uh, and so there's a lot of cool things. That's why it's important to actually update those firmwares. And you can do that easily by registering at MyProphoto on Profoto.com. And then you just enter whatever products you have and you'll get a notification on your email when there's a new firmware available for your products. So it's, it's really neat. Mm. Um, so that's cool. Uh, now we have a lot of questions. Uh, one question was from Jim regarding flash duration. If, it, if it's uh, uh, always faster uh, on all, all uh, Profoto lights with the higher power. And uh, uh, that's correct on the D1. Uh, you actually have the shortest flash duration on the highest power. But all other flashes after that, like the D2, um, uh, also on the B1, B2, uh, the B10, they all actually have a shorter flash duration at the lower power uh, level. And that's mainly uh, a technological uh, reason. It's a different technological platform uh, mm -hmm. on the D1 versus the, the, uh, the B1, the D2, and B2, uh, and, and so forth, and, and onwards. So, so now the lower the power you have, the shorter the flash duration. So if you want to freeze some action, try to uh, cut down as much of the ambient light as possible and, and only let the flash uh, freeze um, the, uh, whatever you're freezing. Hmm. It could be you when you're going, when you're out of uh, your tobacco thing and you're running down to the, uh, so to the store. That's the only time when I'm really fast. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> that's the only time when you're really fast. Yes. Uh, so so uh, it, it does differ. Uh, the D1 is one exception where it actually is shorter on the highest power level. Hmm. Uh, but all the others, the lower the power level, the shorter the flash duration. That was okay. the question. So, for so um, if you have like, if you want to, to uh, freeze when I'm pouring this coffee on this table, which <laughs> I want. On Anders' head. <laughs> yes, on Anders' head. Uh, so if you, if you are go having a really low power level on your flash, yep. it will freeze better. Yep. But if that, that power level is too low, I suppose that you can have multiple flashes. Like if you have two flashes oh, yours, on smart. the lowest power, then you can have a really... Absolutely. Yeah. So if you have access, let's say you have several flashes uh, and then you can have two, three of them, and then you get more yeah. light and that yes. can freeze it. Uh, and, uh, and with regards to, Jim also asked if there's a, a firmware update on, on the D1. Uh, I don't know exactly if there is one recent, but we do go through and update firmware on, on you know, all products. Uh, whenever they, we find something that needs to be fixed. Uh, if there's nothing to be fixed, then we don't do an, uh, an, an upgrade. Uh, and uh, uh, there should be, they should maybe put a sticker on the lights to explain the flash duration will increase or decrease according to power setting. Well, that, that, that's true, that's, that's a good thing. Uh, but in general, whenever you have a, a, a newer flash uh, from uh, like, uh, Pro 10 and, and B1s and all, all the others are lower power level, shorter flash duration. Uh, is, then that yeah. is that the same for the, the Pro, uh, Pro 8? Uh, yes. yes, the Pro 8 has, has the same thing, yes, yeah. that's correct. Uh, then we also had a question from Kevin regarding replacing heads if they are broken, that you could uh, unscrew the head and replace it. Uh, I mean, you can do that with the B2. That's the one head where you can do that. But, or, or of course, if you have a B10, uh, then you just replace the head. But on the uh, OCF ones, you can't really do that because the electronics in these small guys, it's so compact and it's all integrated. And I mean, we looked at uh, actually inside a B10 when we were talking to our engineer uh, on uh, about this and then, we realize that it's going to be really, really difficult to make those detach. And uh, so it's going to be tough. Um, and then we had one question on, on uh, overpowering the sun from Prasad uh, uh, with, with the OCF products. 
uh, and basically, I mean, uh, of course, you need, uh, if you are in very, very strong sunlight uh, and you have a, a, a bit of a distance, then you need, need more power. So you are probably talking about the B1X uh, as the, uh, the absolute best product to uh, overpower the sun. Uh, and if you want to do that really efficiently, uh, maybe David could go behind the two octas over there. Uh, and in between the octa and the strip, that's the one exactly. We have the recipe for you. And it's on David's head right now, but he has a big thick mm -hmm. head. So, <laughs> so it doesn't really fit. Probably fits me better. Yeah, actually it did. I got a small brain. Mm -hmm. So did Einstein, by the way. <laughs> uh, just saying. Uh, this is the OCF Magnum, uh, and it is similar to, uh, do we have a Magnum in picture? No, but we have it here on the wall up, up there. Uh, but this one is optimized for the flat fronts, uh, and it will actually give you 2x the power. So if you have a B10, for example, with 250 watt seconds, when you put this one on, it, 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 it gets you 2x, so it goes from 250 to 500 to a thousand watt seconds so it equals the power of a, a thousand watt second uh, uh, light yeah so it, this is really the best way and if you have a b1 then you're up at 2000 watt seconds that you it kind of focuses and, and takes all the photons that are going in all diff different directions and they focus them boom into what you're shooting so the ocf magnum uh, and combined with hss is probably the best way to uh, overpower the sun with OCF. Yeah, that is a really great product for exactly that application to yep. over overpower the sun. It really makes a huge difference. And then had Andy coming in, the little jokester, he came in late. <laughs> so he would ask him, how many toasters will I need to operate a 1.2 gigawatt flux capacitor? <laughs> well, you do the math, Andy. Uh, we know you can. <laughs> we know you can. And we'll, I'll get you next time I see you, because I know where you live. Um, uh, but anywho, uh, that's a, it's a, the answer is a lot. Um, uh, did we have one more question? Well, oh yeah, Pompo had a question here uh, with regards to where did it go? Pompo. Oh, if it, if the, why why there's not an option to unscrew or remove the front flat port when needed to reveal the actual bare bulb. Uh, that would be a major design improvement. Well, actually, th that's what we're going to move over to and talk about. So it's a very good. So we're going to give you a long answer, Pompo, on, <laughs> on, on, on this one. Uh, and it's the whole discussion around flat fronts, which is which David's going to show, typical flat front. And you have that on the D1s, D2s, and uh, uh, B2s, B1s, etc. And the A1s, and the A1s also have flat fronts versus a bare bulb, which is something like this. And I don't know if well, you probably can see if we angle it like this. Here you can actually see the the light bulb, and it's extruding, so it's outside of this construction. And uh, so there's been a lot of discussions on uh, the efficiency and and so forth, and what you can do and versus cannot do, mm. and uh, versus also if if this one actually can fill larger uh, modifiers, like a large umbrella. And I um, think that is the, 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 the main thing people are discussing, uh, discussing. Can a flat front feel like a larger umbrella or a larger softbox or, yeah. or so, compared to this one where the light is going mo almost like 360 degrees? Yeah. Uh, that is the main, I think that is the that main is question. That is the main question. And, and, and uh, uh, the idea that Fro Profoto had when they designed these plat flat fronts is that they, they did a couple of things. I mean, first of all, inside this, uh, this glass, this frosted glass, you have a reflector. So uh, the reflect reflector's role is to have basically capture all the photons going right back at you where they make no sense. I mean, they make no use besides creating heat. Because when creating photons, they doesn't go in one direction. They always go in you know, all directions. So 50% yeah. of all the energy will actually go the wrong way back into the flash. So the reflector inside there is really, really efficient to put them for, uh, in a forward direction instead of backwards. Yeah, because then you can use it when you take pictures. Uh, that's great. That's that, <laughs> and we like that, kind yeah. of. Uh, yeah. 
Uh, so that's the main reason why they came up with this design. Uh, and then there's, a, there's a been a lot of uh, mathematicians calculating on, on what should the degree be on the reflectors of what the spread should be to be really efficient. And they have actually measured it and tried it with a lot of different uh, modifiers, but both me and David, we distrust every everyone. We like X Files, <laughs> trust no one. So we have to try it ourselves. So we have done that, and uh, we have done that with by comparing a pro head, which has a bare bulb, and we have done it with a uh, both B10 and a, a B1X. So we have tried both um, uh, both of them, and uh, uh, and we have some results for you. And, and uh, we maybe we could look at, because uh, what, what really counts is what happens in front of the flash with the picture. And what also is really important, that the, the, this common question, we want uh, this to be bare bulb. Why? Because of... I'm going to go and get the big large umbrella. Yes, please do. Show how big so it is. So when people want to have this bare bulb, that I think that it is because, as I said, because they want to be sure that uh, the soft boxes is really filled which this seem to be doing. Uh, so that is one reason. Another reason is when you're trying to mimic, uh, like if you want to have a really small, really, really small light um, uh, source, then you can use the, the hard box, for example. Then you need to see the, the bare bulb. But to fill an umbrella or a soft box, then you actually have to know how big is the difference between a bare bulb and a flat front. Because if there is a huge difference, then it's something you really should consider. But what if the difference, or actually, so let's take how a look big at is the difference? So here, so we, have <laughs> so here we have. <laughs> this, oh, this, is this, nice. is, this is a big, 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 big umbrella. It's, it's massive. So, so this is the one that we used uh, to really give the, the test some, I mean, using a medium or a small size, it would probably be very easy even for, for any product. So we used a large one. and. Uh, uh, and, and so that's the one we use. It's, it's huge. And then let's take a look at how the light coverage is over here. Okay, so what do we have here? So here we have um, one umbrella with a pro head and one umbrella with a B10. And they're both shooting into the big black thing in the middle, which is a large silver umbrella. Uh, they are two meters, which is uh, approximately six foot and seven inches away from a wall and you see we put some tape on the wall as well with a half uh, half a meter in between each piece of tape so that we can see how big the different light sources uh, the light coverage is the stamp of light that you get uh, silver is an umbrella that actually collects all the photons and, and, and focuses the light, which you can clearly see here because it barely makes outside of uh, the umbrella. It's very, very much focused, so you get a, a smaller light coverage. Which and, is and more power. And more power, exactly. Uh, and so one of these pictures is uh, a pro head and the other one is um, a, 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 a B10. Uh, and we try to be as exact as possible, so they're both exactly two meters away. Uh, the camera is a meter and a half behind. Uh, same settings, same what coming out of both uh, flashes, so that they, it's as similar as possible. And no changes to uh, any of the settings between the shots. And as you can see, it's really hard to tell which one is which. Uh, I can't tell you which one is. Uh, which, and, and it's basically the one, uh, the first one is a pro head. On the left. On the left, and then on the right side, it's the B10. Uh, and we, if we look at the B10, uh, there's a small difference uh, on the lower part. Uh, it looks slightly brighter, but I think that's just me uh, having a small, small difference in tilt of the... Uh, umbrella. So, so that's basically, and, and as you can see here, it, it makes absolutely no difference. It, it, it easily covers the whole large umbrella uh, uh, flat front B10. Um, so that's why you're not really losing anything if you're using a large umbrella. Uh, there's no difference in, in the light stamp. 
uh, and we also took pictures um, uh, of you know with the A1s and with the A1 and a wide lens on it, it it's actually really efficient in filling even up a large umbrella, which mm -hmm. are, which kind of surprised me. Uh, so we did that. Uh, we also did with a competitive product, uh, where uh, and this product has a bare bulb uh, function, and then you can also put on a reflector on it or kind of unscrew the uh, reflector part and uh, and doing exactly the same thing and here the um, uh, the bare bulb is on the left side and the reflector is on the right side and again not much of a difference um, what we did notice that this competitive product had had some it made some strange patterns uh, which you can see out in the outer edges of the the light coverage there are like darker patches going in compared to the pro photo ones which have a softer gradient a more even gradient uh, on the the light stamp so uh, that's the difference here's a competitive product uh, and then but then we didn't finish with that we actually did also try uh, a large softbox so then we thought what's a large softbox this well it's a large softbox and i would not how large is large? Large is this large. This is a three by four softbox. <laughs> we can have it as a, <laughs> a ceiling yeah, like this. Yeah. So this is a, a yeah three by four foot uh, softbox. Huge. Great if it rains. Yeah. <coughs> and um, and with that one we actually yeah be careful now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is there any, yeah, any questions here coming in? So what we did uh, with this softbox, I put, uh, again, a pro head in there, and I put a, a B10 inside. And then I measured four different points, and which you should see now on your screens. OK, so in the middle, there was uh, F40. Yeah, so in the middle, I, I measured, when I put the pro head in, I got uh, 40 as a reading of the Seconic light meter. Uh, and this is a Seconic 858 for those of you who are interested in Seconic light meters. And then I moved it all the way to the right, uh, out on the edge, and I got a, a reading of 32. And I moved it up to the upper corner, and there I got a reading of 22. And then I moved it in towards the middle again on the upper part, and then I get uh, a reading of 28. Uh, and then, I did the exactly the same thing, but I put the B10 in there, and I did the same readings, and I got exactly the same uh, uh, readings. Mm -hmm. There was absolutely no difference when you want to fill a softbox of that size. Okay, it's a really big softbox, so just to repeat, so when you use the pro head, yes. you got that reading, and when you use a flat front, like a B10, you got the same readings. Yes, so uh, and, and Michael uh, is bringing up a, a good question here. Yeah. Is there an in the baffle? Absolutely, there is, and we uh, there are. This is going to sound a lot. You can yeah, switch to so everybody sees what is sounding. Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So here we have inside here we have the inner baffle. Is this visible? Yep, it's visible. I will even try to. And, and this is the reason why uh, you can use any flat front, etc., because the purpose of that one is to spread the light uh, uh, appropriately in, inside the, the, the flash, exactly. the, the softbox. First we have the flash, the, the, the flash head inside that will light up all, the, of, uh, all the, the inner baffle, that in turn will light up all <coughs> the outer baffle like this. Yeah. And, and that's why all, all Profoto's uh, softboxes have the inner baffle uh, to make sure that no matter what flash you put in there, you can f you fill up the, uh, 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 the softbox evenly and, uh, uh, and use them efficiently. Uh, no matter if you have a Pro Head or a B10 or a B1. Uh, so so that's, if you only look at it from a light perspective or a light stamp or light coverage perspective, uh, it doesn't uh, uh, matter for the picture on what can happen. 
there are, of course, other reasons, and uh, 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 Michael and I, we've had a, a long discussions around, uh, around this in, in one of the Facebook uh, uh, forums, that, that there are, of course, benefits of having a, a separate head or, 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 or extruding flash or uh, like a smaller generator. For example, let's say if you have a, a, a ring flash, for example, and you want to use a ring flash, it's really hard if you have a B10. Mm -hmm. It's tricky. That's kind of but tricky. if you have a smaller uh, generator, yes, of course, uh, then then uh, uh, you, you then it's it's easy because then you can just plug in the ring flash and use it and so forth. Um, and these soft boxes, are, and Pompo is coming up with a question. Pompo, these uh, soft boxes are not big enough. It'd be nice to see, for instance, with this, uh, the Profoto six footer strips. Uh, I mean, we can do the measures for the next time. We promise for next Wednesday, I'll, I'll have the readings for you. Um, uh, but the last time I tried the the six by four which is uh, another huge one, uh, it's even bigger than this, the strip, it, there was no difference. Uh, and it's mainly because, thanks to, like Michael mentioned, uh, the inner baffle. I mean, that is the really the reason that, because the, the light hits the inner baffle, and then from whenever light hits any type of surface or any type of garment or, or diffusion, or, then it, it spreads in all directions, and that's why it fills up. Uh, the softbox. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and I just want to stress the diff yeah, the important part is what is the difference between these two. If there isn't any difference, then it doesn't matter if you had if you would have this as a flat uh, a bare bulb or or not. If we are discussing will the the one by six, for example, be perfectly even? That is another question. That is another question. I mean, uh, will it be even more even with this than that? In your way of putting it, it will be the same yeah. way. So, and then I mean the benefit and the re one of the reasons why uh, they built these uh, the flat fronts with the, with with uh, uh, it, it's mainly because of uh, transportation. It's easy to put in a camera bag and it's not so sensitive for. Uh, I mean, all the all the sensitive parts are inside and well protected, so so you can take a lot more beating than. Uh, a, a flash bulb, a flash with a with the extruded uh, light bulb. So there's more benefits. Um, so so there are a few few uh, occasions where you might need it, and and that's for example if you use the hard box. Uh, when you're using the hard box, of course, that is. Uh, which we d there's an episode where we were mimicking uh, sunlight. Mimicking sunlight, exactly. Yeah. I mean, we had a competition between uh, hard box and umbrellas and magnums and so forth. And yeah. and there, I mean, if you go back into Profoto's uh, Facebook page and go into videos, you'll be able to find that episode and, and there we go through as well how the hard box works and how it all looks inside and so forth. So it's all... So that is a clear reason when you really do need a bare bulb. Yeah. When you're using the, the, the hard box. Um, and I mean that if you are in a studio creating these, uh, let's say, product shots... Yes. ...that you are ne you're needing, you need really, really evenly lit um, uh, surfaces of light to create beautiful reflections and such. I would say that actually what you need isn't a, a huge softbox. You will actually need uh, diffusion materials yeah. or uh, uh, indirect light sources like cardboard that you are shining up from, from a distance to create those really beautiful reflections. Yeah. So the big softboxes that is all about creating a super soft light pattern, a light stamp, a super soft light on a person, for example. Then you don't, I would say that you don't, there is no point of having a perfectly evenly lit surface on a, on a softbox. I mean, the, this fabric is actually wrinkled, which you will see in a, a perfectly exposed reflection, for example. So that is not how you are just supposed to use them. If you yeah. need those perfectly even, light sources, then you don't use soft boxes. I no, would say. diffusion material, you which is two materials. episodes back. Yeah, and uh, um, so I think the question there, the, the questions and the, the critique is kind of, yeah, but who shoots products with a soft box? Like if you're doing it high end, sorry to say, but that is how, it's how you should do it. Use evenly lit diffusion materials, for example, or or, or uh, cardboard. cardboard or uh, plexi, plexiglass or stuff yeah. like that. Cool. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Michael. Love back to you as well. 
uh, and you're great uh, asking questions and, and, and pushing us. We love that, so please do ask us questions. Uh, we did the quest get the question from Montague here uh, uh, with regards to the magnum reflector, bare bulb or flat front. Well, then we come back to if you use a flat front, then you need to use the OCF magnum uh, and, and, and not the standard magnum. If you have a bare bulb, uh, like the pro head, then you should use the, uh, the standard magnum. They give exactly the same output and same effect, uh, but the difference is that the old magnum is actually created uh, for the pro heads, and uh, that was, it was created before the, the flat, flat fronts were uh, created. So here comes uh, yeah. the old magnum, and actually here, if you put the flat front in this one, you will see a difference. It will because uh, there will be a, like a dark ring at the beginning and the inner part, right here. You will see a dark ring, uh, and it will actually create one light source being the outer part of the soft box. Oh, the soft box, <laughs> <laughs> not so soft, but the magnum, and then the actual flash itself it, it, it will be a yeah. second light source. Which so what happens with the shadows? You will have two shadows. You will have a multiple shadow thing going on. Yeah. Uh, and actually, another example of where the Pro Head, uh, a, mo a modifier that's really designed for the Pro Head is the, the soft light reflector. The soft yes. light reflector is created for the Pro Head. Yes. Uh, yeah. And is best made, uh, f uh, best use is for the Pro Head. Yeah. And then there is the OCF. Um, beauty dish. Beauty dish. Ex and that's, exactly. that's why they created the, the OCF versions uh, of, of these modifiers, because there are differences, clearly, uh, uh, but, but uh, uh, on certain modifiers. But then there's an alternative. Uh, and of course, there are a few uh, of you that might have, uh, have a, a cute system or, 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 or another bare bulb system and you already invested in soft light reflectors and old magnets etc yeah then it is uh, uh, then you need to to really get the most out of the modifier you would need to change these but they work i mean they do work yeah, and and they do uh, work and there is no huge difference there's no huge but there's a small uh, difference in and, and if you're really picky like you and me uh, then, then, because <laughs> then, yeah. then it makes sense to use the OCF versions of of them. Just a, as an example, if you use this in a uh, soft light reflector, the old beauty dish, uh, of course you will have a beautiful light. You will have a soft light mm. created by this this big round light source, the f the the what do you call the plate in front of of the flash tube that reflects back into the 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 soft light reflector will create this beautiful soft light. But when you are using a soft light reflector with a pro head like this, then this stamp of light actually will, will be a bit brighter in the center. So it will have a small and really beautiful fall off mm. with a pro head. Yeah. And this brighter part you can actually place like this, a bit lower. If you have the flash like this, I don't know how this is, if this is going to be really clear. Let's say that you place this brighter part on the chest, you will have a more even light from top to chest and stuff like yeah. that. It's really those small, small details that you can have an advantage of if you need it, if you are really, really picky. Then, yeah. So that is uh, one picky difference. And, and then of course there are differences when it, when it comes to the, uh, the components and the power levels of, of, of the uh, Pro 10 and the Pro Head versus the OCF uh, products uh, when it comes to flash duration, when it comes to recycling speed, etc. And that's, the, I mean, there's still, there's a reason why they do exist. Exactly. And uh, you can change the flash tube if something happens and so on. Yeah. So there's a, a different application for them. Yeah, this exactly. is for mass production, really, really high, uh, how do you say that in English? Uh, frequency. No. I mean, you really, high frequency, yeah, a lot of use pictures. flashes a lot. Yeah. Um, and, and then, um, uh, oh, so using the OCF accessories are better for the D1. Uh, yes, the ones that you can use. I mean, like the, uh, the, the OCF Magnum or the OCF Zoom Reflector, because the Zoom Reflector that comes with this one, it also gives you two shadow edges, uh, like pretty distinct ed edges. There's an OCF version of that one as well. Those you can, but you can, unfortunately you cannot use the OCF Beauty Dish because that is uh, made for the LED 
modeling light that you have on, on all the OCF products, like B1, B2, and the B10. Uh, and on the Pro head, you actually have a halogen uh, modeling light, which is really, really hot. Uh, and it would actually melt your uh, OCF beauty dish. And trust me, I've tried, so you don't have to try it. Mm. Uh, me too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and so we, we try everything, <laughs> kind of stupid in that way. But anyway, uh, uh, so, so, so that, that's, that's uh, on the D1 and the D2. Uh, and if you want the, the beauty, uh, beauty dish type of lights where you have the soft light reflector, you do, you, you're kind of stuck with the soft light reflector. Hmm. Um, so that's that. Uh, and uh, uh, what else do we have? Uh, yeah, exactly, Michael. Yeah, we had a, this discussion about uh, using old original light shapers uh, and designed for an exposed tube. So what's the date of the release for the B10, end of October? Oh, Pompo, it's already released. Uh, we are shipping like crazy. And uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, photographers out there already showing that they're receiving the products. Uh, I know that there's been a a uh, whole bunch set of uh, happy campers uh, in the US that have received it, etc. Uh, I know one in Sweden, Osa, uh, you're probably uh, online as well. Um, and, and so they are shipping um, like crazy. We are, as soon as they get come from production uh, to our warehouse, we send them out right away. So I was in Hong Kong uh, the other day and talked with a lot of uh, photographers and um, some of them that actually had the B10 showed me images and they were like uh, so happy those photographers because they had you know the ability to be so free and flexible and every, everybody was like whoa, whoa, whoa this is so <laughs> great and uh, i don't know how many b10s you you have sent to china but the guys i met they had it so yeah yeah, yeah. so they are shipping all over the and it, now it all comes down to uh, uh, how fast you were uh, getting on because I think it's all everyone has done that that's done a pre-order they are getting there first uh, and and so it's uh, uh, so when can, can I get mine I don't have any I know <laughs> I have one uh, you don't <laughs> uh, so you have to behave <laughs> <laughs> so never <laughs> um, and and uh, so so they're coming and um, and, and, and I know I, I'm, we are biased I mean we are sitting here in in Profoto's uh, studio and uh, uh, even though we're not employed by uh, Profoto we're both freelance ph photographers uh, but we do love our products uh, that we are using and I must say I have fallen in love with the B10 uh, r like really honestly it's uh, <laughs> it is a cool light there's so many uh, cool things with it and and there's plenty of power um, and if you know light just even a little bit you can do a lot with those uh, uh, watt seconds and, and then the of course the, the modeling light uh, I haven't used the app that much yet uh, more than showing off that you can do it, but I haven't used it in, in real life yet, but uh, uh, I'm sure it's coming. Mm. Yeah, stop playing with my B10. Yeah. <laughs> Get your own. I, I can't, <laughs> because I have to behave. Oh, there we go. We have also online, yeah, so you, uh, you got it. Oh, you, even you changed your iPhone to an iPhone 7 also, so you can use the app. Yeah, because it only works with iPhone 7 and, uh, and, and upwards, so. Uh, and and uh, now you can use the app, so that's good fun. Uh, yeah, so Pompo, yeah, you will get it anytime, definitely. It's it's shipping all over. Uh, I think we, we covered uh, most of the topics, and I think we covered all the questions. So we really appreciate you guys uh, asking a lot of questions, and uh, we're trying not to miss anyone. And Mark from New Jersey, yeah, you missed so much, but you know that it's going to be on the page right after, so you can watch the first part where David actually goes through how a, li how a flash works, and uh, he, he draws a lot of uh, toasters and buckets, etc. It's actually an interesting part. Um, so, so don't worry, it's there. And, uh, and I think that's about it. We have no more questions. So, uh, guys... Uh, if if uh, you have any questions, take your time now and, and, and post them. And if we see any questions coming in later, we will jump in there and we will answer in the comments. So, because we, yep. we do track them and we 
get notifications on these uh, posts. So whenever there's a question posted in there, then we, we will know and we do re respond. Uh, I hope that cleared out some of the th questions that we had regarding how a flash works uh, and also on the difference between bare bulb and, and the flat front. Uh, yep, and I think that the, the misconception that, um, that, will be, that it would be a huge difference when used in a softbox, I think we cleared that out too. Yep. You won't have that. You won't have dare I say any difference in a software? Well, I mean, I mean we, we pushed it to the limit where we actually even put the same product into a three meter giant. And uh, I don't know, yeah, it's, it's, it's a massive monster, monster big umbrella. Uh, and even on that one, when, when we are taking a picture of the, the light source, it, it, it fills up, there's, I would say, about this much at the very, very edge. Oh, those three, three meters. Yeah, there's one a and a half meter. If exactly, you and, the, and 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 so there's a little bit that you actually don't cover fully with with the flat front, but that's the extreme. I mean, I think Profoto has sold three of those in the world. So those three of you out there, I know there's one in Mexico, uh, and there's uh, one here in Stockholm. So I don't know where the third one is. So for those three guys. Um, I think the, the, the 240 sized one. Uh, that, yeah, yeah, the 240 and the 180, those are very popular. And they're very popular. Yeah. And uh, the flash will fill out those. Yeah. And I want to stress the thing that what actually will the, the difference be when you have a B10 or a uh, Pro Head, let's say inside a, a, uh, a Giant, for example. I mean, the difference is what you have in front of your camera. What will happen? It is the shadow edges that will be uh, changed. If there is any difference, if we have a smaller uh, light source, we will have smaller penumbras. Yeah. And if you do not, you won't have any difference in the size of the in the penumbras. In other words, it will be the same softness. Yeah, and and on on the, when we measured the penumbras on on the, the three meter giant, the the little part that does not get lit by the B, the flat front, it was so small that because. It's so huge, both the 180 and the 240. They're so big that that the, the penumbras are already so wide, so you can't really tell the difference in softness. And uh, if you're those. shooting, if you're using those kinds of um, modifiers, you're probably using shooting uh, full body pictures, and the penumbra, let's say from uh, of a nose or from a person on a wall, it is. It's such a small part. That little difference is such a small part, so yeah. it would probably not be seen. And What's, why, why would you say that the, a smaller penumbra would be better? I mean, I couldn't be, yeah, it's just exactly. all up to the, yeah. So I, I, I think that it's more about a, to have control. You want to know that you're feeling every, all parts of it. And when you miss this much of a three meter giant, then we are talking about really splitting hairs there. Yeah. Not even you and I are that picky. Not I mean, <laughs> we, are, we are picky, but not that. Uh, Jim missed the answer because he had a uh, beep client arrived. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to use that. You have to read it yourself. Uh, which Magnum reflector for D1? For the, Magnum, for the D1 and the D2, I recommend the OCF Magnum reflector. So, so this one, the OCF version of it, because this one will take the heat of the uh, of the, uh, uh, of the, because it's it's hard and uh, of the uh, halogen uh, modeling light and it will actually be optimized when it comes to the the light pattern and the output and everything you will not get double shadows etc so so for the D1 and D2 I recommend the the OCF Magnum and I think. Uh, Michael Mowry's uh, uh, types, the soft edge transfer from highlight to shadow. That yeah, is that's the penumbra. penumbra, exactly. Thank you for clearing that out, Michael. Uh, sometimes we get carried away with using terms that we are uh, familiar with and forget that uh, everybody's not as nerdy as you and I are. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, there's uh, Montague is waiting for an additional 500 watt OCF like the B10. Do you have plans for release? Uh, well, so we don't have those plans. They don't give that us access to that because they know that we would leak like uh, a, a leaking bucket. Uh, we're really bad at <laughs> keeping secrets. We, we, we would talk about it on these lives. It would just <laughs> come out of it. <laughs> 
oh, have you seen the, the B42? <laughs> oh, now you've <laughs> learned. <laughs> yeah, exactly. B42. It has 4,200 watt seconds. Uh, that would be nice. No, uh, I, I really don't know. Uh, if I knew, I, I probably would say it. Uh, um, but I, I think um, if I just go through what we've learned today with regards to the how the B10 looks inside, uh, I think it would be hard to cram in more stuff in it because it's just jam-packed with, with stuff. Uh, so it would not be at the same size if they decide to release a 1000 watt or 2400 watt uh, version because uh, the capacitors and, and all the components, uh, the buckets in there of water, they take space. So, so that's, there's a limit to what, what, uh, what you can cram into a small, uh, small product. Hmm. And, and, and then also, uh, as, uh, Montague, uh, for a, a, as a comment, the, the B10 is actually so efficient in, in using the photons in there that it's only half a stop uh, from a, a B1. Mm. So it's only half a stop down. And that is and thanks to the genius uh, reflector in the back that is using all the rays of light in the, the correct direction in a better way than the, than the B1. And, and so yeah, that's that's one thing. It's it's the the design of the reflector, the surface of the reflector, yeah. which is also more efficient, and then also uh, uh, the glass, the frosted glass, um, and uh, there is a difference actually on on what side you have the frosting. You get different outputs because one side is matte, one side is is glossy. Glossy, yeah. and depending on how you are, how you are are using it, it will actually it affect the uh, the, the, the output. outcome. Yeah, yeah the output. So, because we, we've tried everything, we, we twist and turn everything on these flashes to, to learn more and so that we can share it with you guys and uh, may answer your questions because you have a lot of good, tricky uh, questions. Um, so with that, uh, thank you, Jim. Uh, we, we love your love and we love you back. Um, and uh, hopefully a pack and head in the near future near 1,000 watts. I would say Martin. hopefully a pack and head in the near future, near 5,000 watts. That would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I know what Michael is, is uh, talking about. And, I, and, I, and personally, I, I, I agree that there, there, there is room for, uh, uh, for something in between the, the Pro 10 and the, uh, like the B1X or the D2s. And th there is a room. Because yeah. um, sometimes you would need more uh, power, especially if you're using... How much power does it be for? Uh, it, it, it has a, lo a lot of power, but also that, that's older technology. Yeah. And because now we're getting used to things like TTL and HSS and so okay, forth. Yeah. And, and if we have all those modern things. Bluetooth. And Bluetooth and so forth. So, so I, I think there, uh, we need to do some lobbying. Yeah. <laughs> or but maybe we do one ourselves. Flash. Yeah. Yeah, now we know everything. <laughs> <laughs> now, exactly. we, now we've got the no, lowdown. Really, so. <laughs> yeah, we got really educated so we, we, in uh, electronics. We team up with Michael and we create something because I know, I know exactly what Michael wants. And uh, so we'll, we'll team up and, and, and do, because that's basically how this company started. Uh, it was uh, uh, Eckhard, uh, who was a photographer and used to flash and he got sick and tired of the flashes breaking all the time. Mm. Uh, so he said, I'm going to build the best flash in the world. And then he built it. and. Uh, he talked to his friend Connie Dugron and, uh, and said, you know, I built the best flash in the world. Can you help me distribute it and sell this? And then Connie said, well, I'm going to sell it to the best photographers in the world. And that's why you don't have a B10. <laughs> ah, <laughs> no. <laughs> and but how come you have one? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I stole it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, so that's kind of how it started. So he actually did it. So maybe there's a, a business to start <laughs> creating, yeah, yeah. creating flashes that do not exist yet. Because uh, we have a couple of ideas. Yeah, we do have uh, some. Or well, I, I said you have. And one now we have <laughs> the electronic uh, basic skills. <laughs> <laughs> I think we're pretty far away from creating yeah. one anyway. But anyway, uh, thank you guys. Uh, love you so much, all of you. And great session, a lot of good questions. And uh, hopefully uh, you'll come back next Wednesday. Uh, where we will have a set of new uh, topics yes. and new interesting things at uh, five o'clock at five o'clock or anytime at the rest of the of world course. yeah so with that uh, we'll uh, move over to a short video clip while you are logging out or putting in more questions and we will uh, answer those in the comment field bye 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 bye, bye, -bye. Thank you.
Do you want to learn how to light the background? In this course, we scrap all the unnecessary, overwhelming information that you see online today. Here's what you actually need to start lighting the background. My name is David Bishow. I am the light shaping expert at Prophoto Academy. And in this course, you will learn the different types of shadows, light pattern, enhancing the background. Different type of shadows, the importance of understanding self shadows and how to shape thrown shadows. Light pattern, how to control the light pattern and how that impacts contrast. Enhance the background, how to enhance the background in an exciting and natural way. So join me in this course and I will show you how to get started today, no matter the equipment you're using.